Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I am here with uh, Rachel Yang from Ipsos. Uh, she is going to, to talk about uh, market research with us today. She's a senior account manager with the brand here in Vancouver. Thanks so much for being with me here today. Thank you for having me. So tell me, who is Ipsos? Yes. So Ipsos is a global market research company. It was actually founded in 1975. It's actually a French company. So it was founded in France um, over 40 years ago. And it's a global market research company in like 80 plus countries. So it's a a huge Huge company. company, Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Um, It's also the biggest sort of in the Western Canadian market Mm -hmm. as well. Um, And basically what we do is clients will hire our company to help them answer um, questions that they have. So we're we're a survey company, we're a polling company, um, and yeah, clients hire us to help them answer those key questions for their business. So like what would a question be that you might have to answer? So what I do, I work uh, mostly in the marketing and branding sector of research and really common things that clients will ask us about is, I'm just going to give a random example. So a big like soft drink company, for example, they might come to us and say, oh, we want to know how many people are aware of our soft drink company in Canada or in the U.S. Um, So that's that's touching on something like awareness, brand awareness. And then it might be like, uh, how many people use our our brand yeah. or you know other key things like that um those are kind of the bare basics like right. um sort of questions so how how would you find that out if i'm if i'm coca cola i want to know how many people drink coke regularly right. how do you do that yes yeah, so the the survey is kind of at the core of what we do we're a survey and polling company and um, the main vehicle that we use these days is an online survey. I think in the past it used to be more telephone sure. or even like mail way back in the day. <laughs> yeah. But now it's the main vehicle, I would say, is the online survey. Yeah. So we have panels of people that have agreed to take online surveys and you know they take them to get points and then they can redeem their points for prizes or, or gift certificates and things like that. Mm. So we've got like panels of people that have already pre-agreed to answering survey questions yeah. and so when we deploy the survey online we deploy it to those people that we were trying to target right um and then they answer the questions we get back their data and then we sort of do the data yeah. analysis and report back to the client like this is what you wanted to know and this is what we found yeah okay that's that's interesting this kind of leads me to to my 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 kind of first major question is like so we understand that there's a process to market research when you take on a project like that like what are the steps to the market research process that you might go through so the very first process is you know the proposal and like business development phase so Mm -hmm. um you get the business. We get the business yeah. first. Yeah. Um, that's not really quite what I'm involved in. I'm sure. more on the execution side. But if we're talking about the whole process from beginning to end, first we win the business. So the client says, okay, we're going to hire you, Ipsos, to do this yeah. project for us. Yeah. And then, um, so that's sort of where I come in. It starts with first understanding like the key business questions. So what does the client want to know? What's the purpose of this research? Like what... Uh, geographical area what demographic targets are we trying to reach with these key questions yeah um so once we sort of have all that figured out then we go to the questionnaire phase where we're writing writing those questions like to what extent do you agree or disagree with xyz right which of these brands are you aware of yeah blah 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 so it's really going through the process of writing the questions that will get us the answers that we want that will you know help the client with whatever decision they're trying to make whether that's you know should we invest more in this product or this target this demographic things like that yeah after the questionnaire phase um we sort of if we're talking about an online survey we get our team to script and program the questionnaire so it goes from being like a word document into the actual survey link um and then so that's where we're programming and testing to see, you know, what questions the respondents will actually see. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, that's called like data collection. We send the survey out to all the respondents. Or so the how, where do you find these respondents? Yeah. Like how do you know who, like you just have a bunch of email addresses just fired off to? I believe so. <laughs> so really it's... Um, I'm not sure exactly what the process is for getting new panelists, but I'm, yeah. you know, we're constantly looking for 
people who are willing to right. opt in and take surveys. Yeah. And a lot of people are actually, they, um, it's, it's, we've sort of gamified it so that, you know, they can redeem points to get their prizes and things like that. Right. So, so there's um, an incentive for them. Yeah. It most like it. Yeah. Pretty much. There's a, there's they get some kind of payment of some type. Yeah. And that helps a lot. Right. Of course sure. it does. Yeah. yeah. So it's, there's constantly, you know, panelists coming in and out of the system, constantly like right. cleaning up the bad ones who, right. who give like garbage answers and <laughs> things like that that's we have like a whole department dedicated to making sure our panel is clean and right and good quality oh interesting yeah it's it's super um super unique I right say. yeah sorry i interrupted your process no there. it's all good <laughs> i love walking through this because most of the time it's like what is what do you even do what does right. that even mean so i love walking through it <laughs> Um, okay, we're in the data collection phase where we're slowly getting everyone's answers. We might be, we call it field work. We might be in this field work period for from anywhere from a few days up until a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, because some of the people we're trying to reach, they might be um, harder to reach or they might be, we call them like lower incidence groups. So, you know, there might be less people of this specific demographic or requirement that we're looking for and it takes longer to reach out to those people. Yeah find them um and then after data collection so after we've reached the target number of completed surveys that we were looking for um, then we move into sort of the data processing stage so that's you know taking all the data that we've acquired over the last few weeks from all these perhaps thousands of respondents and um basically converting that raw data into cross tabs or data tables okay so part of what I do, I'm I'm involved from the questionnaire development process. We're writing all the questions, yeah. and I'm working with our, I call them field management teams, to make sure that data collection process is you know is smooth, that we're getting what we need, and I'm also involved in this data processing process where I'm sort of the one deciding how we should display certain questions. Mm -hmm. You know, if we need to break this particular question out by age, gender, region. Like, so right. I'm the one that designs what those cross tabs and data tables actually look like, right. um, which is a really interesting process. Cause as you go through that, you're, you're trying to always relate it back to like, okay, what was the original intent of this research yeah. and how do I um, communicate that in, in the data tables? Fascinating. Yeah. The data process is, it's, it's a steep learning curve <laughs> to learn, but once you get it, it's really interesting. Yeah. And so that's data processing. And then uh, sort of at the very end, we go into reporting. So typically we would put all the results or the key findings into a PowerPoint. Um, I'm also involved in that process. We actually write the report as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's always trying to relate it back to this is what you wanted us to do. Mm. This is the results that we found. These are some interesting tidbits. This is the main summary. Right. And then at the end, it would be like, presentation back to the client to the client yeah okay so that's kind of the overarching yeah. process yeah well that's great that's super helpful so um i understand so there's two kind of uh types of data that we can talk about primary and secondary data um can you give me an example of where would i find secondary data like what is it uh, what are some examples of a secondary data source yes so as we know secondary uh secondary data is um, information that's already widely available, right? Mm -hmm. So it might be things that we use at our workplace. We use um, these websites. There's one called Statista, and that's one that they have information about various topics. They've gone out and done their own surveys, and um, so we usually will reference a site like that if we need to look for some secondary information. Yeah. Um, other really reliable sources are like industry, um, industry, uh, you know, reports and things like that. So let's say we're doing a study about construction. We might go to like the, or engineering or something. We might go to the engineering or the construction industry reports that come out right. from, from various consultants and things like that. So really we, we don't always have a set 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 of uh secondary research that we look at it yeah. really depends on the, the 
project at sure. hand. Sure. And, and is is Ipsos providing secondary research publicly as well? Like, can I go on the website and buy some information? Yeah. Or is so, it always customized to the client? Yes. Good question. So a lot of what I do is actually considered like the primary yeah. research, right? Where the, where it's like a, the client will hire us to do this research and then it's kind of proprietary to them. Yeah. But we also have what's called syndicated research, which is um, we have teams that, you know, go out to our panelists, do surveys, possibly about specific topics. Like we have one about food service industry. We mm-hmm. have one about financial services. So um, that would be considered secondary research that, you know, clients will buy it sometimes, or sometimes you can go online and find it for free as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really good, uh, really good point. Our syndicated is a um, good source for that. As right. Well. So, but your primary role is really creating uh, and collecting, uh, sorry, collecting uh, primary research for your clients. Yes. That through the is. surveys that you guys are initiating. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I deal with in my role. There's other departments that are all about that sort of syndicated or secondary research right. that just get general information, not only that one client wants necessarily, but you know, general info about the financial services market. Generally. Yeah. So what are, um, so you talked about one way that you guys collect primary informa- uh, primary data is through surveys. How else can we gather uh, in marketing? How else can we gather primary research? That's super interesting. So there's, well, the survey is sort of the main vehicle that I'm familiar with. Mm-hmm. So we've got the online, the telephone, the mail. Um, you could do intercepts as well with like a human standing in front of another human doing a paper survey, that like kind of thing. Like at the Sky thing. Train Station or something like exactly, that? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we've done that too. Um, another way of collecting primary data that I can sort of think about and what's newer in, in the industry now, we call it social listening so it's actually scraping like social media sites for for information or for things that are that people are saying or maybe product reviews mm. or you know what are people saying about this current like political climate or things like that. Right. It's another way of collecting information. Yeah, that is, um, yeah, that, that's pretty interesting. Excellent. Um, and so, are are you involved with social listening, or is that something that you would see in your role? like a whole department dedicated to that (laughs) you too so me specifically not so much if if a client wanted to do something like that we would just bring on the other team right and we would sort of work collaboratively together to to get it yeah um and so let's think about ethics for a second so when you guys are collecting research uh are you thinking about the ethical considerations and what are some ethical considerations that you might consider or think about yeah, so for the most part, the topics that I touch or that I talk about um, are usually not questionable ethically. Like, it might be, do you like this product? Are you aware of this brand? So right. that, that kind of thing. But what came to mind for me for that question is when you're talking to vulnerable groups, potentially. Mm-hmm. So in our public affairs department, where they do more you know, government-related things, they tend to be the ones talking to more vulnerable populations. So mm-hmm. it might be indigenous communities. It might be, you know, underserved communities. And sometimes, um, you know, government agencies are interested in interviewing those people sure. so that they can, you know, improve the improve the social services or whatnot. Yeah. And there are a lot of considerations that go into when we're talking to vulnerable populations, even down to recruitment, like who who is going to be recruited, even mm-hmm. down to question design like how can we word this that will not you know be off-putting to some people or you know a lot of the time when we're we're talking to to people um not only vulnerable populations but also more um touchy subjects Uh you know the researchers have to be really careful and done their research as well done their secondary research or talk to the right stakeholders talk to the right people to understand Um, this group maybe we have to phrase things in a certain way or maybe we have to avoid saying things this way right um those are definitely some things like basically we have to do our homework and we have to get you know approval from clients to you know on the questionnaire wording on who we're going to recruit everything like that oftentimes in um 
in marketing, we think about marketing as like a creative thing. Like if I'm a marketer, I'm going to make videos and I'm going to be a graphic designer or I'm going to edit film or I'm going to come up with cool slogans or like whatever that is, right? And that's the marketing that we as consumers engage with every day. Um, do you need to be creative to be a marketer? I love that so much. Um, and I had, I struggled with this too when I was a student not too long ago, like I graduated in 2016 from UBC. And I really didn't know I wanted to go into market research until like the fourth and fifth year of my degree. And that was such a struggle trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And that's what I constantly ask myself. I'm like, I'm in marketing, but am I a creative person? Like, mm -hmm. can I, can I make up logos and can I, you know, video edit and things like that? And the short answer is no, you don't have to be a particularly like, you know, visually creative or right. Artistically creative. Artistically creative yeah. person to be in marketing. Actually, I always tell students this, like to be in marketing, don't think that you will not have to look at numbers. Right. Because a lot of people I find go into either marketing or HR or other fields because they think, oh, I'm done with accounting I and finance. Do finance. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. But it's actually, you can't get away from it, unfortunately. Right. So it's actually really important in marketing to, you know, be somewhat familiar numbers or the math side of things and it's not to scare the students by saying this but it's being just more realistic and like you'll f if you're interested in the subject matter or whatever like you'll you will enjoy it yeah so case in point like i didn't i didn't really want to go it was like process of elimination i didn't think i wanted to go into brand management i didn't want to go into like copy testing and things right. like that but i thought market research was a really great like marriage of the qualitative and quantitative because not only do you have to stare at numbers on the quantitative side, yeah. but you know when you're report writing or when you're writing a questionnaire, that that brings out sort of a more creative side right. of you know how can I express this in a way that is is different or that is impactful for that. Yeah, that's great. That's super insightful. Yeah, I love well, it. I really appreciate you spending some time with us here today. Um, I think you've given us some great insights into market research and some super helpful commentary on understanding like the process and even some of the definitions of some of these terms that are thrown around that yeah. uh, really bring, bring clarity uh, to us. So Rachel, I appreciate you being with us here today. And uh, it's been great chatting with you. Thank, Thank you. you.